Hi, it's Rod, and this one's called What the Real God is Like. It's like trying to ask yourself a question, what is your God like? It's like everybody's got a different image of God or something according to what they believe about him. Some are closer to the true God, and a lot are f farther away from the truth about the real God. It's like if uh, somebody had a God image book, and they were like saying, pick out which image of God you think your God is or something, out of this book or something. You could have a image of God that he's like a sinful human being. <laughs> is this your God? A God that loves you conditionally. A God that thinks you're good because of the good works you do or something. Or you could turn the page and there's like a genie God or something. He gives you whatever you want, whatever you want, and he wants to make you healthy and wealthy all the time. Somewhere in that book, there's the real image of God. The Bible says that when you read the Gospels, when you look at Jesus' life, it's like God in the flesh. So it's good for Christians who start to get saved through Jesus' death on the cross to start to read the Gospels, to start to learn to understand what God is like through looking at Jesus' life. Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen Father God. Follow my example. God's trying to get us to become more like him, but if we don't know what he's like, how are we going to become like him? And then we're in a spiritual war with Satan trying to stop us from understanding the truth of God, trying to form a wrong image of God in our minds, the opposite of the true God's image. But if we want to get saved by the real God and obey him to get into his Bible and let him teach us about who he really is, then we can start to understand more about the truth about who he is. The truth about what the real God is like. So sometimes I get this vision, sort of like a Wizard of Oz, where... It's like God's behind a curtain or something. You're trying to figure him out. And Satan's like behind the curtain or something trying to tell you lies about God in your mind. And you choose to believe them or not. It's like in the Wizard of Oz, they felt like Dorothy wasn't good enough to see the wizard yet. She had to go kill the witch first. She had to go do some good works first. Go get the witch's broom. Then you'll be good enough. To try to get people thinking that God's waiting for them to do good works before they can get close to his presence, and that's just a big lie. So it's like when you think of inner healing, inner heart healing, it's basically trying to understand the lies you're believing about God and try to correct them in your subconscious mind, in your heart. Then you can start to have a more true image of God and start to... Enjoy him more, because he's a great God. So we need to get saved. We need to get into the Bible and let God teach us about himself through reading the Bible. Not just trying to figure out what the Bible means with our natural mind, but praying something like, uh, help me to understand you more as I read this word, God. And he will. The Bible says if you lack any wisdom about who the real God is, ask him and he'll tell you. Can we think of God as a thousand times more loving than the most loving mother on earth is? Can we think that he never leaves us? That he's that loving? He tucks me into bed at night. He protects me standing over my bed, trying to protect me from evil. Never leaves me, never forsakes me. Can we think that God is like my perfect bodyguard that never sleeps? in an evil and suffering, dangerous world? Or do I believe Satan's lies that God's not real? 
God doesn't love you. You're not good enough. Instead of believing that God unconditionally loves you all the time and he makes you as good as he is as a gift. That's what the Bible teaches. That God can make us as righteous as Christ is as a gift so we can be in his holy presence. It says in the Bible, come boldly into God's presence, not by your good works, but by the blood of Jesus. It's all about believing in the blood of Jesus to take all your sins away. It's about seeking to draw close to God through that belief. It's about finding God. It says in God's presence, there's a fullness of joy, a perfect peace, trusting in him. You know you found God when you found fullness of joy and perfect peace. You know you have found God when you're depressed and fearful all the time. Trusting in yourself rather than trusting in God. Believing Satan's lies about God instead of God's truth about himself. Can we see God like a prodigal son's father? We're, we're out there sitting with Satan, destroying ourselves, and all of a sudden we come to our senses and say, it's better to have a good relationship with God than to have a bad one. It's better to be close to my father God in his presence than to be separated from him in my sin. Come to your senses and go to your prodigal son's father in heaven. And instead of Father God saying, you're not good enough to come into my house or something, he's saying, I'm a merciful Father. I love to be reconciled to you. Come into my presence. Let's party. Think of like, God's like a prodigal son's father. He's hugging you. He's kissing you. He's putting a gold ring on your finger. He's having a great party for you every day. It's like Paul could be in a rat-infested prison, but he was rejoicing in Jesus with him in it. So we got to ask ourselves sort of questions to better understand who the real God is like. Do I believe God's love is conditional or unconditional? Do I believe that he saves me by my good works or his grace or both? We don't have to figure this stuff out ourselves. We can ask God questions to get the true answers back. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. He'll teach you what the real God's like if you want to listen to him. If you want to obey him to read his word and let him teach you as you read the word and then meditate on it. Is my God with me always, or is my God absent sometimes? Does my God change? Does he change when I'm suffering? He's a bad God now. Does he change when I'm sinning? He doesn't love me now. Or is he the same, like the Bible says he is? I am the Lord, I do not change. Is he loving me the same all the time? With a love that's a thousand times greater than the most loving mother on earth's love is. I get to enjoy that now and forever. If I believe in it, I feel it in my emotions. It causes me to want to love back this awesome loving God. But if I don't believe in it, God loves me greatly or something, then I don't feel like loving him back or obeying him. It's like asking God the question, how much do you love me, God, and getting an answer back. I gave my son for you, can I love you anymore? Or Jesus saying to you, I suffered and died on a cross to try to be your friend forever, make you my bride in paradise. That kind of love. Do we think God makes us as righteous as him as a gift through the free gift of Christ's righteousness or not? Do we think it's by our good works, or His grace, or both? Does God want to heal everybody all the time if they want Him to? Is healing in the atonement, or not? Or does God want to heal just some people some of the time, for His good purposes? Is your God supposed to be like a genie that fails you? He's supposed to do whatever I ask Him to do to make me healthy and wealthy or something? Or is he a comforter and teacher during sufferings and doesn't do the healing sometimes, like a Job experience for a while? 
It says in the Bible that Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. The Bible says we're supposed to follow his example. And that the suffering in our life, like Jesus says, what they persecute you, great is your reward in heaven, rejoice and be glad. That in heaven, there's sort of like suffering, love gets the greatest rewards, not trying to hide from suffering or something. Believe that God's controlling our suffering, he's got his hand on the thermostat of our suffering, and he's trying to work it all out for good. Joseph. In slavery, in prison, Joseph says, they meant it as evil, God meant it for my good. Wicked Israel, going into slavery to Babylon, God says in Jeremiah, I'm not trying to harm you, (laughs) I'm trying to bless you. If God wanted to harm Israel back then, he would have wiped them off the face of the earth. He allowed them to go into slavery so they might learn to have a better relationship with him in the slavery like Daniel did. We're in a satanic world empire slave world today, and it can work out for our good. we got to believe even World War III can work out for our good. So we're supposed to follow the example of suffering Jesus. We're supposed to like, follow the example of suffering Paul. doesn't matter if we're in a rat-infested prison for two years. Jesus can make us full of joy in a rat-infested prison like Paul. Rejoice in the Lord always in whatever circumstance you're in. Do we believe that there's a fullness of joy in God's presence? Do we believe we can have perfect peace trusting in Him? Can we rest and let the Lord fight for us? Our perfect Daddy God, we got to see ourselves as these little children with a perfect Father, and then we got these enemies coming against us, but they're just like little children too, and our perfect Father God can easily control those uh, little children trying to hurt us or something. Satan, demons, wicked people you got to believe God just has to speak a word, and it happens. God just spoke a word, and the world came into existence. God could just speak a word and drop dead all my enemies at once, if he wanted to. So, we need to ask God to teach us what he's really like. we got to choose to believe in what he tells us about himself. Not what Satan's telling us, the opposite. What God's trying to tell us, the truth. He loves me unconditionally. He makes me as righteous as he is as a gift. He can let his son Jesus, the Holy Spirit, live in me to do good works out through me. I can't do good works by myself, but with Jesus doing them through me, I can. And those are the kind of good works that God rewards forever. The ones that I allow Jesus to do through me. So, that's what we need to do. Try to think in our mind, what is my God like? What do I think the real God's like? And if you got a wrong image, if you got some lies of Satan about God, you got to try to ask God to help you to correct those things. Also, you could get into trying to understand what the real you is like, and you need God to help you to do that. That, uh, you were born from Adam, and you got a wicked heart. You're going to hell unless you get saved from it. If you do get saved from it, then God can help you to become as righteous as Christ and start doing righteous acts and go to heaven and get great rewards or something. The image of what I'm like before I was saved and the image of what I'm like now that I'm saved. What is? What am I really like as a... Christian, or what am I really like as an unsaved person on my way to hell with Satan or something? And choose to correct these things. I don't want to be unsaved and on my way to hell and demon controlled. I want to be on my way to heaven and Jesus controlled. So that is a bit about what the real God is like.